Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode 30, we will discuss service-based questions that can often be really confusing and makes it difficult to choose the correct option. Some of the examples include Azure Monitor, Azure Log Analytics, Azure Trust Center, Azure Sentinel and many more. So please stay tuned until the end of the video as I present 20 crucial questions on AZ900. And please note we have already covered 560 questions in our earlier parts and if you wish to watch the previous episodes, links are right there in the description box. And also my friends, a free PDF file is waiting for you at the end of this video containing all the questions and the answers from part 29 and part 30. So let's begin. So let's begin part 30 with question number 561. It says that your company plans to deploy several web servers and several database servers to Azure. Now you need to recommend an Azure solution to limit the types of connections from web servers to the database servers. What should you include in your recommendations? Your options are network security groups, Azure service bus, a local network gateway and the last one is a route filter. And the correct answer for this question is option A, network security groups. Quickly jumping to the next question, question number 562, it says that you have an Azure Sentinel workspace. Now you need to automate responses to the threats detected by Azure Sentinel. What should you use? Your options are adaptive network hardening in Azure Security Center. Option B is Azure Service Help. Option C says Azure Monitor Workbooks. And lastly, we have Adaptive Application Controls in Azure Security Center. And the correct answer for this question is Option C, Azure Monitor Workbooks. And in case you want to understand more on Azure Monitor, this is the Microsoft documentation which says how to use Azure Monitor Workbooks to visualize and monitor your data. So here you can read that once you have connected your data sources to Microsoft Sentinel, you can visualize and monitor the data using Microsoft Sentinel adoption of Azure Monitor Workbooks which provides versatility in creating custom dashboards. Also, you can read that while the workbooks are displayed differently in Microsoft Sentinel, it may be useful for you to see how it creates interactive reports with Azure Monitor workbooks. So a great documentation, my friends, in case you want to understand Azure Monitor workbooks, this is one of the less talked services in Microsoft AZ 900, but surely you will get questions on this. So please have a look on this documentation. The links as usual is shared in the description box. Let's move on with the next question. It says Azure Sentinel stores collected events in an Azure storage account. Yes or no? And the correct answer as per me, my friends, is no. And friends, I know there is a lot of confusion on this question on the internet. So I have done some research and here I found this documentation which says plan cost and understand the Microsoft Sentinel pricing and billing. And here in the first paragraph itself, it says that Microsoft Sentinel security analytics data is stored in Azure Monitor's log analytics workspace. So based on that documentation from Microsoft, we can say Azure storage account is not the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, question number 564 says that Azure Sentinel can remediate incidents automatically, yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. Coming up next is question number 565 that says Azure Sentinel can collect Windows Defender firewall logs from the Azure Virtual Machines. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. So I hope my friends you like the questions on Azure Sentinel so far. It's a very less talked about service in Microsoft Azure. So please learn on this Azure service as there are many questions coming up in recent times in AZ900. Now let's change our focus to the other services. But before that, please press the like button and appreciate our efforts in bringing lot of well-researched questions. So let's move on to the question number 566. It says Azure policy helps organizations to your options are enforce organizational standards and to access compliance at scale. Option B is create security policy. And thirdly, we are given with create firewall rules. And the correct answer for this question is option A, enforce organizational standards and to access compliance at scale. And friends, we have taken a lot of questions on Azure policy, which is really important from the AZ900 exam. Please watch the previous parts and take up all the questions on Azure policy. Coming to the next question, question number 567 says, can one user account have more than one Microsoft 365 licenses? Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. 
I know this is again a very confusing question for many of the AZ900 exam takers. So I have done some research for you and I found this documentation from the Microsoft Q&A page and here you can see that someone has asked exactly the same question. It says can one user have multiple Office 365 licenses? So what's the answer given? Let's find out. Here you can see the answer is given by someone which is called Will. Now let me zoom it a little so that we can read better. It says that an Office 365 business can only be associated with a work email address and if your work email address can be signed up as a personal Microsoft account, you may use it as well as for Office 365 home and personal versions. The only difference is the site where you are going to access the subscription. Office 365 business can be accessed. Here you can see the portal.office.com while the Office 365 personal and home can be accessed with account.microsoft.com slash services. And finally, he sums up by saying my answer is yes, a Microsoft account can have both Microsoft 365 business and Microsoft 365 home as long as it is a work email address. So that documentation from Microsoft validates our answer. Let's move on to the question number 568. It says can we use SSO without Microsoft Authenticator? Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is yes. And in case you want to understand what is SSO or what is single sign on in Azure Active Directory, this is the Microsoft documentation. Here you can read all about single sign on, what is single sign on, what are the other options, federation, all the options, all the information is given on this documentation. A well presented video is also there. So please go ahead and read this documentation. Coming up next is question number 569, another very important Microsoft service which is conditional access. So let's read the question. Question says that conditional access uses signals collected from a user during sign in process to decide to allow or deny access requests. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is yes. So friends, conditional access in Azure AD capability that lets you automate access control based on certain user condition. And it's very important to note that conditional access policies are enforced after the first factor authentication has been completed. And please pay attention, it's not intended as a first line of defense for scenarios like denial of service, which is DOS attacks, but it uses signals from these events to determine access. And in case you want to read more and understand conditional access and how can you use it in your applications to determine access, this is the Microsoft documentation. The links as usual is in description box. Now let's take more questions on conditional access. Question number 570 says that conditional access brings signals together to make decisions and enforce organizational policies. Yes or no? And the correct answer this time my friends is yes. So let's validate our answer. I am on the same documentation and here you can read that the modern security parameter now extends beyond organization's network to include user and devices identity. And please note here comes our answer. It says organizations can use identity driven signals as a part of their access controls decisions. And that's exactly what was asked in this question as well. So this validates our answer as yes. Moving on with the question number 571 that says your company is looking to build authentication system. The solution given is that you recommend use of conditional access. Does this meet the goal? Yes or no? And this solution my friends is not the correct one. That's why no is the correct answer. So let's validate our answer. I am again on the same documentation. Here you can read in this important section, it says conditional access policies are enforced after the first factor authentication is completed. Conditional access is not intended to be the organizational first line of defense for scenarios like denial of service attacks, but it can use the signals from these events to determine access. So that's why no is the correct answer. Moving on with the question number 572, it says conditional access policies at their simplest are if then statements. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. And you can validate the answer on the same documentation that we just referred. Now let's check out some more services. Question number 573 says that what should you use to evaluate your company's Azure environment meets the regulatory requirements? Your options are Azure Security Center, Azure Advisor, Azure Service Health and the last one is Azure Knowledge Center. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Azure Security Center. 
Moving on to the question number 574 that says what can you use to identify underutilized or unused Azure virtual machines? Your options are Azure Advisor, Azure Cost Management plus Billing. The third option is Azure Reservation and lastly Azure Policy. And the correct answer for this question is option A, Azure Advisor. So friends, Azure Advisor helps you optimize and reduce your overall Azure spend by identifying the idle or underutilized resources. You can get cost recommendations from the cost tab on the Azure Advisor dashboard. So want to learn more on how to reduce services cost by using Azure Advisor? This is the documentation. Here you can see that Azure Advisor, as I just mentioned in my documentation, helps you optimize and reduce your overall Azure spend. Here you can see a lot of other information, for example, optimize virtual machine or virtual machine skill set spend by resizing, shutting down underutilized instances. And this is exactly where our answer also lies. So that's why Azure Advisor is the service that you can use to identify underutilized or unused Azure virtual machines. And now my friends, let me present you one more variation of the same question that we saw in the question number 574. Question number 575 says that you have an Azure subscription and you have 100 Azure virtual machines and you need to quickly identify underutilized virtual machines that can have their service tier change to a less expensive offering. Which blade should you use? Your options are metrics, customer insights or Azure monitor and the last one is Azure advisor. So do I need to tell the answer or you have already figured it out? It's option D Azure advisor. So friends, I hope you like these variations of the same question or the same concept because in my opinion, it's very good to prepare for AZ-900 exam or for any other exam for that matter. So as I always encourage, please understand the concept because Microsoft can tweak the questions in various styles, but you should understand the concept so that you never pick the wrong answer. Coming up next is question number 576. It says who can use Azure total cost of ownership calculator and your options are billing readers for an Azure subscription only. Option B is owners for an Azure subscription only and option C is anyone. And lastly, we are given with all the users who have an account in Azure Active Directory that is linked to an Azure subscription only. And the correct answer for this question is option C anyone. And the reason is very simple my friends that you don't need to have an Azure subscription to work with TCO calculator. And in case you are wondering what is a TCO calculator, well TCO calculator helps you estimate the cost saving of operating your solution on Azure over the time compared to operating in your on-premises data center. And people from finance would really already know this. The term total cost of ownership is used commonly in finance. It can be hard to see all the hidden costs related to operating a technology capability on premises. Software licenses and hardware are additional costs. With TCO calculator, you will enter the details of your on-premises workload and then you can review suggested industry average cost for related operational cost. This cost includes electricity, network maintenance and IT labor and you are then presented with a side by side report. Using the report you can compare those costs with same workloads running on Azure. So in case my friends you or your company is thinking to move your solutions on Microsoft Azure. TCO is the first place where you can analyze and estimate what will it cost to you or your company in case you are moving your solution to the Microsoft Azure. And here comes question number 577 that says that you have an Azure virtual machine named VM1. Now you plan to encrypt VM1 by using Azure disk encryption. What Azure resource must you create first? Your options are an Azure storage account, an Azure information protection policy. The third option is an encryption key. And lastly, we are given with an Azure key vault. And the correct answer for this question is option D, an Azure key vault. Now here comes question number 578. It says that you need to be identified when Microsoft plans to perform maintenance that can affect resources deployed to an Azure subscription. What should you use? Your options are Azure Monitor, Azure Service Health, Azure Advisor and lastly Microsoft Trust Center. And the correct answer for this question is option B Azure Service Health. So friends Azure Service Health provides a personalized view of health of the Azure services and the regions you are using. This is the best place to look for the services impacting communications about the outages, planned maintenance activities and other health advisories. 
And now we have question number 579. It says that your company has an Azure subscription that contains resources in several regions. Now you need to ensure that the administrators can only create resources in those regions. What should you use? Your options are a read only log, an Azure policy, a management group, and the last one is a reservation. And the correct answer for this question is option B an Azure policy. And here comes question number 580. It says that your company has a software assurance agreement that includes Microsoft SQL Server licenses and you plan to deploy SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines. What should you do to minimize licensing costs for the deployment? Your options are deallocate the virtual machines during off hours. Option B is use Azure hybrid benefits and then we have configure Azure cost management budgets and lastly we are given with use Azure reservations and the correct answer for this question is option B use Azure hybrid benefit. So what is Azure hybrid benefit? Well to start with it saves on the cost while optimizing your hybrid environment by applying your existing Windows servers, SQL server licenses or Linux subscriptions to Azure hybrid benefit. And here you can also read that Azure hybrid benefit is a licensing offer that helps you migrate and save to Azure. And to apply for this benefit, you must be paying for either Windows server or SQL server core licenses with software assurance or a subscription to these products. And secondly, an active Linux subscription includes Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Linux Enterprise Server running in Azure. And by using Azure Hybrid Benefit, you can achieve cost saving, modernize and maintain flexible hybrid environment while operating business application. So please learn about Azure Hybrid Benefit on this documentation. And now my friends, in case you're looking for the PDF containing all the questions and the answers from part 29 and part 30, these are the questions for which you need to give me the answers for. So from the part 29, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 541, 552 and 559. And then from the part 30, you have to tell me the correct answers for the question number 562. 573 and 580. You can share your answers in the comment section below or you can also email us at connectus at the rate the techblackboard.com and please note my friends in order to avail this free PDF file you must be subscribed to the Tech Blackboard YouTube channel. And whenever my friends you're sending your replies please always mention the part number while sending your answers. So I hope you found the questions on Azure concepts like Azure Sentinel, Azure Policies, Trust Center, Conditional Access, informative and engaging. If so, then please take a quick moment to hit the like button and help us grow. And as always my friends, if you still have any doubts or you would like to share your feedbacks or new questions, please feel free to leave a comment below or email us at connectus at the rate the techblackboard.com and we are always happy to respond and improve our content. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.